I uh, want to start with uh, something very basic, which is that uh, seismic design in its very essence is an exercise in trade-off between strength and inelastic deformability. Inelastic deformability is the ability of a structure to continue to carry full factor gravity loads as it deforms laterally beyond the stage of elastic response. Elastic response may mean force proportional to displacement, but, but it doesn't have to. Elastic really means no residual displacement. The earthquake passes, you get your structure back intact, no damage to be repaired. Now, the larger the range of inelastic displacements over which gravity can be sustained, the higher the inelastic deformability, the lower the need for strength. And the other way around, the shorter the range of inelastic displacements over which gravity can be sustained, the lower the inelastic deformability, the higher the need for strength. Inelastic deformability, as we say on the slide, comes from proper detailing of the structural members and joints. So, so this is why the importance of detailing, the strength level that we use in design and the detailing that we do go hand in hand. Chapter 16 in our building code, the IBC sets the strength level. Chapter 16 actually refers to ASCE 710 and in there we have the design base shear equation which sets the uh, strength we build into a code design structure and all of you I'm sure know that the strength level the design base shear V is inversely proportional to the R factor the system dependent factor the higher the R the lower the strength level and the other way around. The detailing rules on the other hand are given in the materials chapters of the code. 19 for concrete, 20 for aluminum, 21 for masonry, 22 for steel and 23 for wood. The uh, materials chapters typically refer to material standards, do not have the requirements in the code itself. Chapter 19, for instance, will have you go to ACI 318, and that's where you will find the detailing rules. Now, in those material standards, typically, and this is definitely the case of concrete, which we are discussing today, uh, sets three different levels of detailing, and these are called ordinary, intermediate, and special. The detailing requirements become more stringent as you go from ordinary to intermediate to special. The R value that I talked about provides the link between the strength level, the design force level, and the detailing that we have to do. As I mentioned already, the higher the R, the lower the strength level and the higher the need for inelastic deformability. So we have to do fancy detailing or special detailing as we call it. The low, uh, lower the R value, the higher the strength, the lower the need for inelastic deformability. So if the R value we use in design is low, then we will be allowed to do intermediate or even ordinary detailing. So this is the way the uh, code is set up. I want you to absolutely unmistakably understand that the strength level of chapter 16 and the detailing requirements in the materials chapters go hand in hand. Seismic design has always been a two-part affair. One without the other does not make any sense. Now, uh, 
I talked about trade-off between strength and inelastic deformability. Now, the very important thing to understand and for me to point out is that uh, unrestricted trade-off between strength and inelastic deformability is allowed only in the low seismic design category B. Seismic design category you are doubtless all familiar with. It combines uh, three things. The seismicity at the site of the structure, the seismic hazard at the site of the structure, the occupancy of the structure, whether it's an office building or an apartment, and the uh, soils at the site of the structure very importantly. 